this is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. This evening I want to talk a few minutes about uh, herpes zoster ophthalmicus, basically shingles affecting the eyes. Herpes zoster ophthalmicus is basically when the herpes zoster involves the ophthal ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. So the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve is involved and it presents with malice, fever and sometimes headache. And also periorbital burning. These patients come with uh, that burning sensation and itching. And these symptoms, they precede the eruption by one or two days. So first these symptoms comes and then the rash comes. And you need to remember how the rash evolves. It starts as a vesicular rash, then it becomes pustular and then becomes crusting. So that is the three things you need to remember. It starts as vesicles, then becomes pustular and then finally it uh, appears as a crusting. So the, uh, the other important point is whenever you see the tip of the nose or the lid margin affected by herpes zoster, that's a sign that the eye is going to be involved. So you see the involvement of the nose or the lid margins, it always predicts the involvement of the eye. So if you see the nose, then it's going to affect the eye. And many times it can cause conjunctivitis, keratitis, sometimes even episcleritis and also anterior uveitis and many times it also can increase the intraocular pressure so there are complications folks and uh, you, are, you should always keep an eye you should explain these complications you see the wide range of uh, things sometimes even subcapsular cataract can happen as a long-term complication in this patient. Sometimes recurrent anterior segment inflammation and uh, keratitis can happen in the long run and uh, cataract can happen in the long run. So these long-term complications should be explained to the patients. And uh, many times optic neuropathy, cranial nerve policies, and uh, acute retinal necrosis and sometimes cerebral artery inflammation. These are the acute stage complications. And also if the patient is having recurrent ophthalmic problems due to help a zoster, it's a good idea to test them for HIV because HIV is a risk factor for help a zoster ophthalmicus. So remember that point, HIV is a risk factor for herpes zoster ophthalmicus. So test these patients for HIV if they are having uh, severe symptoms and uh, they are having recurrent problems. And it also can increase the likelihood of complications. Now what is the treatment? Basically, acyclovir. 800 milligrams five times a day. So patients say, oh, five times, oh my, but they have to take, that's 800 milligrams five times a day. And also valacyclovir, one gram, three times a day. So acyclovir or valacyclovir, or also there is another drug called famcyclovir, like 500 milligrams three times a day. So acyclovir, Valacyclovir, Famcyclovir. These drugs are very, very effective if you start within 72 hours after the appearance of the rash. So the timing is important. The earlier you start, the better you can control these complications and uh, can also give um, relief from post herpetic neuralgia. And if the patient develops anterior uveitis, it needs treatment with topical corticosteroids and also cycloplegics. Cycloplegics give that relief to the patient. So, uh, you, you see these are the very, very important points. So, herpes zoster ophthalmicus, I see a lot of these patients, folks, 
So this is a common condition. And when I see these patients, I will see that characteristic history, a vesicular rash progressing into pustular, and then finally becoming a cresting. And also, when I see these patients, what I would do is I immediately start them on a cyclovir or valve cyclovir or fam cyclovir. And the most important thing is I explain the complications of this problem. I always tell them to call me when they find any complications because that needs urgent referral to an ophthalmologist. So that's about herpes zoster ophthalmicus. Thank you very much for your patient listening. As always, visit me at drpaul.org. That is drpaul.org. And uh, you can view hundreds of our videos. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.